Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Howdy everyone and welcome back to Ask Rob and Rob where you ask us questions and we give you answers. Same format every week, you kind of know it by now. And also the way you get involved is pretty easy too if you've listened to a few of these. But we'll remind you just in case. Yeah, you should know this, but it's 013-808-0035. That's 013-808-0035. Leave us a voicemail or go over to the propertyhub.net slash ask. Leave us a message that way instead. That's what Paul did. So let's have a listen to Paul's question. Hi, Robin Rob. This is Paul. Short time listener, first time caller with a stinking cold, I'm afraid. I've got my eye on a property that's not currently on the market. And I'm wondering what the best approach is to try and convince the owners to part with it. The house itself is nothing out of the ordinary, but it looks, looks a bit neglected. So obviously I'm hoping it could be a below market value purchase. So do you have any experience of buying houses this way? And if so, what tactics have the best chance of success? Should I just knock on the door and ask or drop an informal note through the door? Or maybe research the owner in more detail and write more formally? And are there any pitfalls that I should be wary of? Any suggestions you could offer would be really helpful. Thanks again. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Awesome, Paul. Thank you. You've kind of listed out most of the approach methods there. So just to repeat, you could go and knock on the door if the owner lives there. You can drop them a little note or maybe do a bit of research. And of course, to expand on that, if the owner's not there and maybe the property's let out, you might need to do the research via the land registry to see who the owner is. So there's your options, really. Ultimately, unless you're prepared to give a silly offer, This person needs to be reasonably motivated or at least open to the idea of selling. So the letter, the knocking on the door approach, whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter. If this person's fixed on never moving, then the approach doesn't matter too much. But as a way of guidance on how to approach this, I would say stick to your strengths. And that's about knowing yourself, really. If you write well and you can really get your message across through a letter, then Pop it through the post or pop it through the door if you live locally. If you are great face-to-face and you're an excellent communicator in person, then knock on the door. Ask good questions. And you might get a no and it might be a quick no, but that's okay. Don't worry about rejection if if that's your preferred method. So I don't think there's a right way for everybody. It's going to depend on the seller and it's going to depend on you and how you best communicate. There isn't a killer tactic that works every time. No, just a couple of other tactical bits to throw in that you could try. If the property is empty, then you can try speaking to the neighbours and see if they've got any contact with the owner. Or if the property is tenanted, then what I know works for some people is speaking to the tenants and offering them an incentive and saying, like, if you deliver this letter to the landlord and I end up buying the property, I'll give you £200 or something like that. That's just tactical stuff. But I think the broader point is, like Rob said, play to your strengths but also don't get fixated on one property this is the kind of thing where most of the time it's not going to work so you really want to be identifying lots of properties like this in the hopes of managing to secure one because this really is a numbers game there's any number of reasons why this person wouldn't want to sell so spread your bets a bit if this is going to be a strategy buying below market value identify as many of these as you can get a system for finding them a system for approaching the owner and eventually you'll get a result great advice rob let's hope you've still got some left for our next listener Who's Caroline? Hi, Rob and Rob. It's Caroline here in the Highlands. I was wondering what your thoughts were on buying properties of non-standard construction, particularly prefabs. I'm getting to the end of my first renovate to holiday let project and I'm looking for the next. I found a 1960s prefab that's been blocked around. Um, It has views to die for. It's right on the beach, so it ticks a lot of boxes. I know I won't be able to get a mortgage on it, but are there any other issues that I need to be aware of, Um, particularly since I'd want to change the internal layout, which is currently six beds and one bath? Thanks a lot. Love the show. And you've kept me going through an awful lot of plastering and decorating over the last six months. Okay, Caroline, thank you for your question. So you've managed to identify the main issue with prefabs, which is mortgages. So you've said that you won't be able to get a mortgage on it. You're okay with that. The main thing that I would say, Rob, is that Caroline might not want a mortgage and that's fine. But thinking ahead to the exit, her future buyer might do. So her exit options might be a bit limited. Yeah, absolutely. That's the main thing. The reason why lenders don't lend on them is because they weren't built to last. Now, you may disagree and you and you may say, well, actually, it's lasted far beyond the time it was meant to, which many of the prefabs you find were built, uh, say, around the Second World War and were, were built for 20, 30 years and are still standing perfectly well today. But mortgageability is limited. But that exit is really important for most people. And if you plan on never selling and passing it down through generations and they'll never sell, then fine. But 
you have to take that into account. Also, what's the motivation for doing prefabs? Is it a love of prefab buildings? I'd suggest that's pretty niche, so I'm going to say no. So you're probably attracted by the yield. But there are other ways of getting high yield. So I'm not saying don't do it, but I think what we would say is have a look at other options first where you can get finance because it is really important for your exit. So possibly be open to look at HMOs if you're chasing yield or high yielding areas. So there are areas of the UK that you can still get a really, really good yield. Not, not an area you necessarily want to move into, but an area that you could definitely get a really, really attractive yield. So pros and cons, pros, yield, but you can get that elsewhere. Cons, mortgageability. So overall, I'm not saying don't do it, but just go in eyes wide open and now hopefully you can make an informed decision. So there you go. Another couple of property questions dispatched. If you've got something rattling around in your head and you want to know the answer, then you can follow in the footsteps of Paul and Caroline and get yourself on the podcast. Just go along to the propertyhub.net slash ask. We would love to hear your question. We'll be back with Ask Rob and Rob next week. And of course, we have the property podcast on Thursday. So we look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.